So if you've ever heard of the term, the phantom X, it's essentially used to describe somebody who even while in a relationship with somebody else or while single tends to constantly fantasize and think about and have a bit of an emotional bond tied to an ex from the past. Now, phantom ex is most often used to describe when that happens while somebody's in a new relationship. And you may see different signs that somebody has a phantom ex and different things that they do in a relationship that may demonstrate this. So in this video, we're going to cover the fearful avoidant attachment style and four crucial signs that they may have a phantom ex while in a current relationship. And we'll talk about what this really means and how to not take it personally, but also what to do if you're on the other end of it. So first and foremost, if you're not familiar with fearful avoidant attachment styles either, the fearful avoidant attachment style is one of four major attachment styles or love styles. Every single person has an attachment style and fearful avoidance tend to be the hot and cold style. They are sort of like touch and go. They can be really warm and then really cold. Um, and it's part of because they usually had a lot of kind of tumultuous and chaotic understandings and experiences around love and attachment growing up and in their upbringing. So one of the first signs that this individual has a phantom ex is that they may talk about this person frequently, or if they start talking about them, they can really go on for a long period of time. Fearful points are very interesting. They tend to have this pattern of like undersharing or oversharing. So when they start talking about the ex from the past, perhaps to you, if you're the partner in the relationship now, they can really go on and on. And they may share things that are a little bit inappropriate, like really great memories. And, you know, not, it's not like they share in the context of you ask a question and so because you're curious and they give an answer, or they talk about something they learned from the past, or they talk about a hard time that they went through and how it affected them. It's not like that with a phantom ex. It's like they talk about good things, good memories. They get excited talking about it. They light up. When you see those sorts of things, it's a sign that can be pointing in the direction of phantom X and fearful avoidance sometimes will tend to do that. Number two, you may even find that they compare you to the X from the past. So you may experience things like them, um, you know, talking about what the X used to do versus what you do. And they say, oh, well, so-and-so never did that. And it can feel a little bit alarming or, um, shocking to be on the other end of that experience. Like, why would you compare me to that person? Like we're in a relationship. Like that's, it almost feel like a bit of a breach of trust or a violation of trust to a certain degree. And so if you see things like that, that's not the, the healthiest dynamic to, to be in. It's not a really great sign. And it's also a sign that leads to the potential of a phantom X, by the way, what you're about to discover in a few minutes in this video is that the phantom X has so much to do with needs and not expressing needs. So we'll talk about that in a moment, but if you um, feel like your partner might have a phantom X or you might have a phantom X as a fearful avoidant, it actually has so much to do with you not being able to get your needs met in the relationship that your ex represents from the past. And if you want to understand what those needs are and what to do with those needs, you can check out for free for seven days to discover, embrace, and fulfill your personal needs course down below that will actually take you through all of that stuff and how to discover needs and communicate about them, because that's actually going to stop you from falling in this pothole. So number three sign is that the fearful one may actually try to reach out and talk to them or build or develop some kind of relationship with the phantom X. And I'm not sitting here saying that you shouldn't be friends with exes or you can't ever. Sometimes people are friends for a long time before they date. And sometimes there's a time and place for things. But if you're in a new relationship and you have a friendship with an ex, it has to be treated with a lot of care. It has to have solid boundaries. The person you're currently dating ideally should be in the loop when you communicate with that person, should feel like they're included in that experience. Maybe even you all spend time together or hang out if it's not too strange. You know, I know this sounds funny, but like dependent on circumstances, I've worked with a lot of people in my practice who co-parent and then are in a new relationship. And eventually they all have to sit down at dinner together. Or if somebody was friends for 20 years, then they dated for two years and broke up. And then they're dating somebody new, but this person's a close friend. We ideally want to get rid of the mystery, right? So I would often get people to go, you know, if, if you're in this new, more serious relationship, maybe you all hang out together at one point and meet each other. It doesn't have to be like on a regular basis, but if the friendship's going to be there, there has to be openness, transparency. There has to be inclusion. There has to be communication. There has to be good boundaries, right? Like 
you can be friendship, a friend with somebody, but you probably don't want to talk to them every day on the phone for an hour. If they're your ex, maybe you touch base once a week or once a month or have a high level conversation, talk to them in front of your partner. So there's no hiding anything. Anyways, that's maybe a separate video for a separate time, but um, you know, there just has to be a lot of care addressed here. If there, there really wants to be this friendship that's maintained. So if you see the fear of avoidant trying to reach out and talk to them, and if it's in a strange situation where there's like a sense of it being hidden, a lack of transparency, a lack of context, um, regular communication, very vulnerable communication, frequent communication, these could all be signs um, that this person is the phantom X, right? So it's really important to pay attention to. Now, remember, um, they can also, number four, try to connect with them indirectly, even if they're not like in communication with them, maybe, you know, stalk them on social media all the time or reach out in that way very frequently. You may see patterns of that. Now, remember what I said earlier, I said that when somebody has a phantom X, it represents something. Really, there's a lot of like golden nuggets around a phantom X. There's a lot of information it's telling you. Phantom X's happen because the phantom X represents to the person needs that they're not getting met now. I remember having a conversation with somebody years ago and she had a full-time job. She had two young children and she said she was really over her ex, would never want to date him again. But, and she was married now with somebody else in a new life all this time later. And she said, I keep thinking of this person and kind of like fantasizing about the past and reminiscing and like feeling things about it. Why is this happening to me? I wasn't happy in that relationship. I would never want to date this person again. What's happening? Why is this going on? And I said, well, what kind of memories are you thinking of? And she said, oh, they're always fun memories. It's always things about like the fun things that we were doing, you know, the spontaneity. And I said, and how much do you feel that fun and spontaneity are fulfilled in your life right now? And she said, oh my gosh, like almost zero. I'm so serious all the time. I have young children and so many responsibilities and I work. And, and I said, your subconscious mind isn't fantasizing about the, the person so much. I'm willing to be with the person, but what that person represented to the subconscious, it's trying to call your attention to. And this is how it works. So when we understand that and we use that information to empower communication in our, in our current relationship, that's where all of a sudden we know what our needs are. We can tell our partner, hey, I want to do more spontaneous things. Let's carve out one weekend a month where the in-laws come over and babysit the kids and we do something that's spontaneous or fun or one Sunday a month, or, you know, sometimes it's hard for people, but something to meet that need. And then that actually collapses this fantasy about people from the past. So it's really powerful information if you have a phantom X. And it can also symbolize that somebody doesn't know their needs or feel empowered to communicate their needs in their relationship now. And needs are the lifeblood of relationships. If we're not communicating needs and giving and receiving them, it's very hard for relationships to work and to sustain themselves in a way that's thriving. So I have some exciting news, which is that we are doing $1,000 off of our lifetime membership sale to the Personal Development School which means you get access to literally everything at PDS for your entire rest of your life. Essentially that entails all of our different courses. You have lifetime access to, I do four live webinars a week, every single week, you can access them ongoing and you get access to all of our daily community events. So I'd love to see you on the other side and you can access it by using the link in the description box below. So it's so important to know needs. It's so important to know how to communicate needs. Um, and it really empowers relationships. So if you want to check out that course I was mentioning for free, all about needs, um, the link will be down below. And I put daily content out on this video, on this channel every single day about the subconscious mind, integrated attachment theory, which is the new attachment theory, our core wounds, our fears, how to heal, how to really reprogram these things by treating root cause. And if you don't want to miss any, um, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you don't miss any daily videos. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so, so much for being here and for watching, and I will see you in the next video.